Well, good day to you. It is September the 15th. I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you happen to be. My name is Gary Willing. I want to welcome you to Search for Signs if you are new. Welcome you back if you have been here before. As I always like to say, stay as long as you want. Come and go as you please because I will keep putting these videos up for quite a bit of time to come. But anywho, um, if you want to know more about this information in the meantime, if you want to see if there's anything to this for yourself, investigate it. Do that however you want to do it, but I have included links to websites that give you really good background information to at least start in your investigation. All right, now I also would like to thank Smoke Doja, Rick Todd, Spirit Spirit Watcher 178, and somebody who's new from commenting, uh, that one guy walking. And um, I appreciate comments. I look forward to comments. Of course, I like questions. Uh, they help to kind of gear what we're going to say in the next video, and hopefully we all kind of learn from it. You know, when I try to answer these questions, I know I do. So, but it ain't always about me. But all right, let's get on into it. Um, that one guy walking was commenting, <laughs> it's just a short little comment, why I believe Maitreya is the Christ. He said, humans will believe anything, and that is for sure, they will. Now, the difference between what you're thinking I'm doing and my intention of putting these videos up and what I'm actually doing are probably different. I don't expect people to believe me on anything. In fact, I don't even think people think that I'm sane by saying what I'm saying. <laughs> I think most people probably think I'm totally nuts. Totally fine. You know, all I need to do is just get the word out there about my tray of the masters of wisdom and his priorities. That's it. And then you do whatever with it you want to do with it. But of course people believe anything. I mean, just talk to a MAGA supporter who believes everything that Donald Trump says. Anyway, but I, I hope you're skeptical about what I'm saying. That's why I always encourage people to look into this for themselves. And there is evidence, because I'm going to be talking about this in reference to the other comment that I'm going to talk about next come from, coming from a person who's been commenting quite a bit, Smoke Doja, um, who uh, said, and I quote, I ask questions because there's so much information out there and everyone always has a different view like Wayne Peterson, etc. So it's hard to figure out sometimes. And of course, people are going to be leery. Maitreya is saying he is the Christ. When we know when Jesus comes back, there will be no mistaking. It will come in the clouds with his name on his leg not on a TV screen. We will believe the Antichrist will talk to everyone on television at once, which is what the Day of Declaration is. So, of course, people are going to look at him crazy. And I'm 50-50 on if Maitreya is even real. I have always wondered if Krem was just a con man, and we've heard for 40 years he is here, etc., but nothing. There's not me throwing, that's not me throwing shots, but being 100% honest. There's zero evidence of him being real besides some pics of random people and stars, etc. I can ask 100 people about Maitreya, and 98 of them would have no clue who he is. Some call them masters, others call them fallen angels. What's crazy to me is Maitreya won't come forward because of our free will, so the Bible must have more power than he likes to let people know. Because if you say Jesus was just a teacher, then none of the people would be real. None of the Bible would be real, excuse me. And free will wouldn't matter, which he says he can't come forward because our free will, so therefore he can't come forward until the real Christ allows it to happen, the only begotten Son of the Most High. Which means this time is short, and he knows this, but that's all just hypothetical if he is real. I just like to have discussions and learn from others who have different views than me. I'm not opposed to learning even from people who don't agree with most of what they say. Thanks, Gary. No question this time. So thank you for the comment. I, I'm going to say a couple things about this, okay? So first, Maitreya is not going around saying he's the Christ. And the times that I met him, he never did. Um, the times that he interacts with other people, he never does either. But when he was at least becoming more known in the um, Brick Lane community of London or the Asian community of London where he... Um, had resided for decades, there were people that were starting to suspect that he might be the Imam Mahdi, which is the teacher that the Muslims are awaiting to come back. The, you know, esoterically, it's the same person as the Christ that the Christians are waiting to come back, but ideologically, they see it differently. And there were a couple of people who asked him, are you the Imam Mahdi? And he said, this is just a name he's referred to as or known as. He never makes that claim. 
he even went so far to say that it's just a name. These names don't mean anything, really. They're man-made, actually, names of the same teacher. And he says they only cause confusion within the minds of the people. Because he would say, if I'm the Christ for the Christians, then what about the, the Messiah for the Jews? If I'm the Messiah for the Jews, what about the, what about the Muslims? What about them? He's really a, just a teacher for the whole world. Now, ideologically, you see him differently than I do. You know, ideologically, I can't imagine why people would be so hell-bent on looking at a priority like the need to, to bring about peace, the need to save our environment, the need to end hunger as any kind of evil. I know you're not saying this, but people say this all the time to me in response to this information. When really you can take from any information, and this isn't just to do with this information, you can take what you want from whatever and use it for whatever you need. I, you know, truth be told, I, my wife's a, a very fundamentalist Christian. For some reason, we can get along. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I go to, I go to a very fundama fundament, fundamentalist Baptist church here in Atlanta called First Baptist Church. In fact, they'd have a TV broadcast that you can see all over the world. The, the pastor used to be um, uh, Charles Stanley. Now this is other guy named Anthony George. I don't go there every Sunday because a lot of times I'm working on Sunday, but you know, I enjoy it. And in fact, I learn a lot from them. You know, it doesn't mean that I have to agree with everything that they're saying, especially when it comes to politics and the, the political side of things and so forth. I don't agree at all with it, but it doesn't mean I can't learn from a few things here or there and go, yeah, I can, I can apply that to my life. And I leave feeling more fulfilled and uplifted than I did before I went there. But had I gone with the intention of I am totally at odds with them because they believe this and I believe my ideology, then I wouldn't have that experience. So I'm not expecting people to have the same kind of approach to different views. You seem like you might have it to some degree. You know what I mean? I don't know you, so I can't speak for you. You know what I mean? But it's okay to have other people with different views on things. And as for my trade being real or not, and there, if there's evidence, there actually is evidence. You know, there's a lot of evidence. You just have to look for it. That's why the title of, this, of the, um, this video series is Search for Signs. But I understand, and I've said this before from time to time, that I would understand more from somebody saying, I don't believe that he's even real based on the fact that my, uh, they've heard about this information for decades perhaps and they haven't seen anything on TV that would indicate that he is real. And they would just think that, that Ben was scamming people, which he never made any money off of this. So what would he be scamming them about? But... You know, I could understand that more than the Antichrist thing because most people, in fact, all the people who think he's the Antichrist who comment on this channel and have said all the nasty things they say about Benjamin Krem, never heard ben never heard Maitreya speak. They've never experienced his wisdom and his love. They've never seen him in person and recognized him perhaps or on TV and recognized him. So how would you know? So my thing is always just wait and see. You haven't invested anything in this except for a very little amount of time answering a few, you know, posting a few comments and some questions, and that's it. You haven't put any money into this. I haven't asked for you for any money for anything. You haven't given me anything like that. So you're not out any bucks, and you're certainly not out on a lot of time. So just wait and see. And if you're right, you're right. And if I'm right, I'm right. You know what I mean? But it's just, you know, you won't really know the truth until you see them. That's why I would say just wait. In, you know, in the meantime, if you want to know more about it, those websites are there for you to look at. You don't have to keep coming back to this channel. You know, I've always said, you know, just once you get to a certain point, you don't have to keep coming back or, you know, come back and check in on us the next year and see if we're talking about the same thing. Because he, it might be another five to 10 years before we see and recognize by Tria on TV. I don't know. Now, it doesn't have anything to do with how powerful the Bible is, you know, and it really actually does not have anything to do with, with the ideologies of different groups of people like the Christians, the reason why he can't come back the way he is. It, it has more to do with the economic situation in the world, because that's where the crisis of, in the world is right now, is centered in economics, the economic disparity. So with the way commercialization is at this time, with which as like Benjamin Crumb's master said, ha is has its hand on the throat of humanity, squeezing out any generous thought or, or you know, creative thought or generous you know, no notion, I think is how he put it. 
and it's really killing humanity in a lot in the vitality of humanity and and the the spirit of humanity it's killing it it's it, it it's drained now so something will have to be done about that that's really more of i think why he is not as vocal as he is but he is out on tv you can find you can try to find him the only person that i know that even came close to recognizing him that admitted it i'm sure there were others was a friend of mine who was doing a talk uh here in atlanta and a woman came up and said she saw him on TV. She said he doesn't look anything like that. And he wasn't even talking about the things that we were talking that, about Maitreya with his priorities. He was talking about politics. That's just what she said. But she goes, I know that was him. So that was the only person that I know. But I've had experiences in my life that, that lead me to believe that it's true. The great thing for you is you don't have to believe me at face value just because I said it. I'm not a parent of yours that is trying to instill this doctrine into you. I'm not a celebrity that you might look up to and believe me just because it's I'm somebody that you look up to. You don't know me. You have no relationship with me. So based on what I said, you can either believe it or you don't. You know, And that's, that's how easy it is. And then anything else that you have in terms of your view of Jesus coming back, I might not agree with that, but I'm not here to tell you that you're wrong. You know, I might present a different viewpoint on what that is, but that's it. You know what I'm saying? But if you, if I can give you any advice, just sit on it and wait. Don't do anything with it. You haven't committed anything to this. You haven't violated any of your Christian vows in terms of investigating this information for yourself, you know, and then looking at the priorities of the teacher, you know, the, the ending hunger, bringing about peace, those kind of things would be right in line with any other Christian value that I know of. So you're not violating that if you look into perhaps what you can do to help end hunger or bring about justice or something like that. So anyway, I think that's right along the lines of what Jesus was talking about. But anyway, we'll, we'll get into the other stuff later if you want, but that's, you know, that would be my um, advice to you on that. Now, the next one, I'm going to kind of answer some of the other things about the Antichrist in terms of this comment. And I think there is a uh, question in there. I see a couple question marks, but let's read it. Spirit, Spirit Watcher 178 uh, commented and said, digital currency cashless society is rapidly approaching. The digital currency has been planned to be a biochip, possibly in the hand. Trials have already been done with this technology. So my question to you is, oh, there's a question. The day we become a cashless society, people start to receive a biochip for this, and the masters make their presence known. Is this when every man, woman, and child are required to take a Luciferian initiation before they can buy or sell? So the simple answer to that question is no. Does this coincide with the whole concept, we will own nothing and be happy? No. And so if you look at the principle of sharing, let's talk about that. That transcends any economic ideology, whether it's capitalism, socialism, or communism. Those are just ideologies. The most capitalistic country in the history of the world, the United States, was, this, was the country that tried um, the principle of sharing for about four years right after World War II. It didn't alter anything to do with this country other than it created an economic boom in this country and it re helped rebuild Europe and it helped stabilize Europe from possibly going back into another world war. And it also, as a side effect, which I don't think was their intention of doing it to begin with, maybe for George C. Marshall, but that might, he might have been the only one, is it did bring about a little bit of peace amongst these nations, even after 70 or so years since it happened. But it did not change the ideological makeup of this country. Now, capitalism is dying because it is based off of the past, off of competition. It's based off of greed, corruption. It is supporting the few, the very, very few, at the expense of the very, very many. And the economic system of the future, based on the principle of sharing, will be the exact opposite. It's going to support everyone and make sure everyone's needs are taken care of. We'll have food, clothing, shelter, health care, and education as a right. It will completely free up a lot of the stress. People will feel like their lives are more fulfilled. They'll be able to feel, they'll be able to start to experience true freedom because of the fact that their needs are taken care of, but they will still own things. 
money will still be around for quite a bit of time, according to Benjamin Crumb's master. It's not going to be a cashless society right away. Now, in terms of taking the mark or whatever people think that they're going to happen, if you look at the Bible and you read Revelation, I do think there's a lot of misinterpretations about Revelation. The single biggest, I think, misinterpretation of Revelation is the timing of everything. People think it's just a few years. I think it's spanning from when John wrote Revelation during his time, because one of the beasts, Nero, that he wrote into the Bible was actually during his time, somewhat around this time, maybe plus or minus 100 or so years, and then far into the future, several thousand years. And the, the beasts that he wrote in the way that he wrote in were symbols now, the Antichrist, from an esoteric point of view, is not an individual, it's not a person, it's an energy. It was first released through Nero. And, and what happened with the Emperor Nero of Rome, the one that watched Rome burn as he played the fiddle, supposedly, um, it was released through him individually, and it destroyed the old ways of thinking and relating at that time to allow for Christendom to occur. Because according to the Masters, Christianity would have never flourished in the way that it did had the Antichrist energy not been released through Nero. So he was the first beast that John was speaking of. And then the second one was the Axis powers. It was a group this time. Of, it made up a triangle. The Nazis in Germany being the strongest point, the fascists in, in Italy, excuse me, and the militarists in Japan, the Axis powers were created a, a triangle, a very nefarious evil triangle, and this energy was sent out through them to destroy the old ways of thinking and relating to allow a new way of thinking and relating to occur, which we're still feeling the effects of it today. Now, if you look at some of the things in the Bible, you know, I would say that the mark of the beast would have been what what the the Jews in, in German society had to do when under the occupation of France and some of the other countries where they had to have the, the, the Star of David on their clothes in order to conduct business. That could be another way of looking at that. Now, cashless society and all these things that people are scared of and all that kind of stuff, the government has ways of tracking people without putting a chip in their hand. You have a chip in your phone right now. They can already see where you're going. They can already see where you've been. You know, They can hear your conversations. They can read your text because you have an iPhone. They do not need to put a chip in your in your hand. Now, I, I've said this before, kind of tongue-in-cheek, but I'm actually kind of being serious. Out of all the people that talk about this information, that all the people that talk about other information in relation to this, I'm going to give you a guarantee, okay? It's the Gary Willing guarantee. If the masters of wisdom, when they come out, and Maitreya is known for who he is, and they are pushing and advocating for everyone to get a chip in their hand, I give you full well permission to come to Atlanta and kick me in the nuts. <laughs> That's my guarantee, okay? Because I know it will never happen like that. Now, there are companies who have been trying to put in a you know, chip. I know there was one company I read uh, not too long ago, actually. They, they wanted their employees to put a chip in their hand so they could clock in and out. Yeah, that didn't go over very well. <laughs> so, you know, politically, I just don't think it would ever happen. You know, and then people, of course, made it all about the vaccine and all that kind of stuff where there's no truth to that, you know. So it's just paranoia in a large extent. There's no, nothing to do with it. Now, in terms of digital currency, anything based in capitalism is dying. Any new idea, revolutionary idea that's going to that help boost capitalism will eventually die because we're moving into a new time when the systems and the structures that we built in the, over the last 2,000 years will not be able to function like they can function because they don't fill the needs of all the people. Life is energy. Everything in the world is energy. Everything in the cosmos is energy. The, the buildings that we built are based off of energy. The structures that we built to support our society are based off of energy. It just depends what kind of energy are you building it off of. The energies of the political structures that we've had, whether it's pro-democracy, fascism, communism, you know, any other kind of political ideology uh, to any kind of economic ideology, whether it was communism, socialism, or um, capitalism, are all based on the past. Now, Maitreya has said that it, really the economic framework that works the best is about 80% socialism, 20% capitalism. To allow, an, it's, he said it's like two wheels on the same cart. You can't have, 
you can't push a cart with just one wheel. So right now, the United States is at about, he said about 95 to 98% capitalism and about 2 to 5% socialism. And most of those socialist programs are based, are given to the rich. And then when it comes to socialist countries, the Scandinavian countries are a little closer. They're like 60, 40, 60% capitalism, 40% socialism. So still not there, but much closer. And if you look at the quality of life of the people in those countries, they have a much better quality of life. They'll tell you, I've met people from Finland and Sweden, not so much from Norway, but they've all told me that they love the countries that they live in. So you don't see a lot of people from Sweden, you know, migrating illegally into the United States in order to live in the United States. The reason why countries like Mexico and those people do that is because economically they are living in abset and really abject poverty to a large extent. Creates a lot of terrorism with drug wars and gang wars and there's a lot of violence and so forth because people are fighting over the economic pie. So they're they're leaving and they're trying to, to, to come here for a better life. If countries like the United States gave of their excesses to countries like Mexico and Central and South American countries and so forth, they wouldn't feel the need to come here because the most of the people that I know who are Latin descent and Latin from coming from Latin America that are here illegally do not want to stay here. And they're not here because of the American dream. They're here to make money for their family, make money for themselves and get back to their country. So anywho, that I know I kind of went off on a little bit of a tangent, but that that's really, there's nothing to any of the masters advocating chips or marks or anything for us to do business back and forth. You know, we have government regulation enough for that. You know, you have to have a social security to get a job, right? You have to have a social security number to get a bank account. You have to have a federal tax ID to start your own incorporation, to start your own business, right? Those things are already in existence, right? But the the other aspects of it that people think relate to the Bible, I don't. I think some of it had to do with with what happened under World War II, but the majority of it is just symbology and and so forth like that. Like even I'll give you. I'll leave you with this. One of the things that Ben's master said about one of the beasts in the Bible about the the great prostitute who sits on the throne, and I can't remember exactly how it's worded, but John talked about this prostitute sitting on the throne and she was getting drunk from her wine and all the kings and queens um, around the world will drink from that wine and commit adulteries against their people and be drunk on this wine. And he said that is it was a symbol for the stock markets of the world, which is what our world leaders are doing. They're getting drunk on profits and they're betraying the trust of their people. They're committing adulteries against their people. So anyway, Something to think about. But I appreciate the questions nonetheless, and you still haven't overwhelmed me, uh, Spirit Spirit Watcher 178, so keep them coming. Uh, Smoke Doja, thank you very much for your comments. Hopefully I kind of addressed it a little bit. And maybe give you, I'm not telling you they're wrong, I'm just giving, trying to give you a different perspective that might, might at least make this information seem a little less threatening. You know, maybe, you know. But again, to swing back to you, just wait and see. Wait and see. You don't have to do anything with it. And if it takes another 40 years, it takes another 40 years. I doubt it, but let's just say it does, you know, whatever. Eventually, he will be known for who he is. You know, he's already out in the world. Part of the majority of the time that Ben kept saying he was coming, he was coming. He hadn't gone on TV yet. Once he get once he entered our domain by speaking to us on TV, you know, that changes everything. But I don't think Jesus, just as I don't think Maitreya is walking around going, you know, Telling people, you know, I'm kind of a big deal. You know, I don't think Jesus walked around Palestine doing that, right? So when when you quoted that verse from, uh, I can't remember what it was. It was from, I think it was John 8.25, I think, if I'm not mistaken. You know, and did Jesus claim to be this, the only true son of God or he claimed to just be a, a teacher? So he could have been saying to them, and this is just another perspective on what you had said the other day, was maybe he just said... Uh, I've, you know, what, what is it? Uh, who, when they asked who he is, he said, I, the one I always claim to be, but he, it doesn't say the one I've claimed always to be the only true son of God. He didn't say that in the biblical verse. If you wanted to take it literally did not say that. I don't want to get into a biblical debate on it. You can, you read into what you read into it. I'll read into it, what I read into it. But Maitreya, you know, the laws of free will, we have no concept of truly about the truth of 
how to live within that law as these masters do, as Maitreya does. And when they teach us the laws of life, it will make a lot more sense. But right now it seems quite foreign, and why wouldn't he do this? So I've tried to offer up some, some thoughts on, as to why, but that might not even be all of the reason why he is not speaking and using, you know, and people are, more and more people aren't knowing about who he is yet. But anyway, hope that makes it a little bit more sense. You guys take care. Have a great day. And as always, I love everyone, whether you commented or you didn't. I love you. Thank you very much. You guys, have, a, like I said, have a great day. And I look forward to talking to you again. Remember to take action and help SOP save our planet. Thanks for listening. And we look forward to talking to you again in future videos. Thank you.